Son Allen was up there. I mean, he was like that. Hey. He, he couldn't move. He oh, Lord, just, he just, they looked like, uh, they looked like a rhinoceros riding a turtle. And he was up there, son. Like, that old boy, they put me back there. And I had my bag. Well, it finally it went this way and this way. And, and I, so I laid my head down. I was tired. Well, if you're going to die, who cares? I, and I went to sleep. Alan grabbed my leg and he says, what are you doing? I said, I'm tired. Said, I wake up. He said, you don't get to see this every day. I said, well, it looks like Google to me, Alan. He said, you can't see. And uh, I said, it'll be all right. I said, and, and about that time, uh, that old boy looked over at Alan and he, he seen Alan was freaking out. Alan won't be on the ground. And uh, he, 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 st he started telling him. He, he said, now, son, he said, now, it's going to be off. <laughs> son, that plane cut to the lail, and it went straight down, and then it went back up. I like so hard that I was going to die, son. Because, I mean, he just said it's going to be all right. Come that time, he looked about his <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like six flags lower. Cause my stomach went through my throat. And, uh, so we get through that storm, and... Uh, uh, that, he was wanting you to that fella, no, that fella says, uh, behind you, there's a briefcase back there, a little thing. Get that thing out. So I'm back here, pale from the back of the plane. <laughs> and I said, is this what you want here, son? I mean, you could be like this to this and touch the back window and the front window. I mean, we's there. We was, I mean, we'd all died in the pile. If we was and so I told him, I said, yeah. I said, is this it? He said, yeah, pull that out. There's a big Garmin screen. And then he said, there's some knobs with a thing back there I can tie it on this dashboard. So I got it out, and he had Alan over here screwing, you know, putting this in. Mid flight, there's some wires back there. So I got the wires. So he had Alan over here hooking this and hooking that, and to get it to go. And it's a weather thing. You can find time, you know, we're through the storm. And uh, so he gets to dialing in, and there's about three more storms, because we're in Arkansas. We ain't in Marshall. I mean, we got a really good ways to go. So there's a big storm. So Alan becomes an instant meteorologist. <laughs> now, he learns everything there to know about this in five minutes, because he's, gonna, he's wanting this guy to go way around it. So we're about 60 miles from the next storm. <laughs> Alan's a son, he's watching it. And he's watching it. And I mean, the reds are moving right in our path, you know. And he's telling me, he said, I believe we need to go to the left, you know, to get around that thing. Yeah, he said, I, we might call once we get gone. It went dead. <laughs> well, his dead gym plug wouldn't work, and his battery was dead. He said, Lord, he said, I thought that plug would work. He said, I ain't had this plane up much, you know, around there. They, they use it to train with. <laughs> so, he said, I usually don't take it. So. Yeah, I don't usually take it. I usually take Mother Nick and shop, you know. I said, what, did he crash or have a problem? I mean, what you... So anyway, it wouldn't work. The plug wouldn't work. I told Alan, I said, you want to crack in that die see if you get that plug to work, and, you know. No, let's just forget that. So I put everything back in the case. And I was like, that's what we're going to know what the weather. And he said, well, we'll see it, you know, or something, whatever. <laughs> so then all of a sudden it pretties up, and it's just as smooth as it can be. <laughs> then about that time we hit the next storm. Oh, it's left. It's right. It's up and down. And then we get through that, and uh, then there's another little old storm. And finally, Alan's he's just tired and gives up, you know. <laughs> so anyway, it's uh, we're next to Murphy. And... Uh, Chattanooga. Yeah, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Right well, a quarter tank of gas. I said, it's, uh, I said, from Arkansas to here, there's some pretty good emergency landing places, but now once you, from Chattanooga to Asheville, your selection's greatly reduced <laughs> to where we can crash land and survive. And he thought they had enough, but wasn't sure. Yeah, because he said we had enough yeah. fuel to get there. I said, we ain't got a quarter tank. And I said, I got some money. We, I'll kick in a few bucks if you will stop and get some gas, you know. Because I said, after you reach Chattanooga, there ain't no more airports. And he thinks about it. I was thinking about it, you know. Alan said, yeah, we'll stop and get some gas if you want to. And he's like, well, he called him. He said, this is such and such. He said, we're going to stop and get some gas. He said, yeah, we ain't have no business. No way, come on down. So we get down and we get gas. But don't hope 34 gallons if it's slammed full. And uh, it held 29 gallons. And he got, he said, 
He said, we didn't have enough to make it. I said, well, <laughs> well I'm, I'm glad we made this decision. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, this is serious. I ain't even making it up. <laughs> so I called Melissa and tell her that we're in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I wish the lovely, it's a beautiful Scott Lane. Yeah, Terry, you can smell. I wasn't going to tell her our situation at all. <laughs> Those birds are dying. You know. But the, you, the worst was yet to come. <laughs> So we get uh, we get fuel in about that time. It's dust dark, and uh, we start to take off. Here we go again because we burn our fuel. Ah, oh, we're heavy, we're heavy, and uh, finally we get into the Atlanta thing, and there the Atlanta's telling them to be at seventy five hundred feet. He's a trying, he's a struggling to get there, and finally he gets to 7,500 and levels off. He calls Atlanta and says he's 7,500. They said you're 7,200. Uh, my thing says 7,500. They said, well, we got you at 7,200. He said, that thing was working good. And he wasn't moving it around. And he said, what you got me at now? And it's like 73 something. He said, huh, what about now? And finally, so 75 feet, he redials it in, you know. I'll have to look at that when I get back. Well, it's getting dark, dark, ain't it? I said, you'd rather fly the night or the day? He said, uh, oh, Lord, the day. He said, I've never flown at night. He said, this plane at night. About that time it was getting dark, didn't have a dash light. But no lights worked in the plane. <laughs> and, and, and then that woman calls him, finally got him to 7,500 feet. And says, whatever you are, Fox Troll of Missoula, I need you at 7,000 immediately. Son, he knows. <laughs> I mean, it's straight down. About that time she calls, he tells the black woman on the flying radio, uh, where are you at now? I'm going to 7,000. Uh, disregard, go back to 7,500. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's trying to figure out his coordinates. So here we are, I ain't got a dash light nowhere. And he, uh, he, he, he pulled out a piece of paper. He raffled through something. And he got a flashlight. He clicked it on. He got his glasses out. He couldn't see. And he was doing like that. And then he'd go like that, you know, and he'd do like that. And I said, oh, gosh, this baby made blind. This is I said, keep flashlight on that gas thing. He'll release her fluid, you know. <laughs> and uh, some were all over the place. I mean, it's the mountains, you know, it's a lot more turbulent. It's up and down. It's nighttime. So finally, we make it, because I told out, I said, there's Bryson City in, in Cherokee and Franklin, and we go across through there. We afraid he was going to hit the mountains in Murphy. Yeah, I told him, I said, uh, you know, these mountains is higher than you think, you know. I mean, you, you, you're coming from cornfield country. I said, around here, you can't see this stuff, especially when you got no dash lights. <laughs> and uh, so he got, he, he called somebody and wanted to get hired. He got hired. So anyway, we get to Hendersonville, you can see the airport. And I told him, I said, there's the airport right there. And he's looking. And he said, is it, that, that's the actual airport? I, I said, yeah, best I can figure out. That's the airport. Oh, there's them big smokers at Skyland Edwards, you know. I see them poles at the power plant. He calls Ashland and says he has them in sight, and he's going to clear the land. They call him and tell him. They say, yeah, he's cleared the land all this and that when he gets close. And I got him 14 miles out then. So then he, kept, he gets about 10 miles or 8 miles, and he calls them back and tells them where he's at. And they said he's cleared the land. Well, then we get like 3 miles. Well, he still just... Headed toward it. And I said, if you're landed in Asheville, God knows it ain't been in Arkansas. And I said, well, you, will this plane stop within 75 or 100 foot? Because I said, you're going sideways. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, is that, I said, you got to go way over there and come in this way. I said, the airport goes that way. And he's looking. He gets that flashlight out and he calls him and he whoops her to the right. <laughs> um, and he goes out toward Bavard, and he finally, he calls them back because he's going off to their screen. You know, he's like, where are you going? He's like, well, I'm making a U-turn to land. I was headed sideways. And Son Island was like that. And he starts to land. He's the, he's coming down. He's like this. He's looking at man's a looking son. He can't see. I mean, he, that's why he don't fly at night. He can't see. And he hit the ground, and then he come up, and then he went sideways, and then he hit, he finally, he just shoved her down. Lord. Is that the plane that crashed when I was in the last? <laughs> and then we get up there, and I said, I said, I said, are you going back tonight? Because it took uh, 
five and a half hours to get there, you know. I said, are you going back tonight? And he said, yeah. I said, you want us to run you to Walmart and get you a battery thing for you? Garmin is just right up here. I said, Lord, I paid for a motel. Because evidently, you can't see at night. You don't need to be flying back at night. You know, I mean, Lord, it was a sight. Well, he's glad to be alive just to get gone. <laughs> that old man jumped out of there, and there's oil pouring out of that plane. He Did he that, go back? He told that boy to fill her up, and we got in the car and went home. Don't know. We didn't see it on TV. <laughs> no he might have crashed that next morning.